So the title of my talk is that texting is good for us. Now I have no idea whether texting is actually good for us or not. <laughs> but in my years of researching digital writing, I do know that if I put something like texting is good for us in the title of a talk, I am guaranteed an audience. <laughs> You've proven my point once again. You came here just for this, right? Now I'm guaranteed that audience because a good number of people in that audience are convinced that texting and other forms of short writing presage the end of Western civilization as we know it. I'm not so sure that's the truth either. But what I do know to be true is that right now, we write more than any generation of humans in human history. And the reason we do that is because of the transformative power of networks, which I'm going to get to. But I'm not really here to talk about texting. I'm doing a little bait and switch here. I'm not really here to talk about writing in, in short forms of writing. I'm really here, if I have anything approximating a big idea, it has to do with the disconnect between the way digital writing works in the world and the way we teach or don't teach digital writing in schools. So what I'm going to try and get you to think about today is the notion that networks have revolutionized how writing works everywhere except education. In education, writing is still the neglected R. And that can absolutely no longer be the case if education is going to be powerful for the 21st century. So, I'm an academic. I'm a researcher, I like numbers, and I'm a really weird English professor in that I like numbers. And my family will tell you, they will insist that I don't know what, what to do with numbers. I can't add, subtract, multiply, or divide, but I like them. <laughs> we don't have to spend a lot of time with this slide, even if you could read it, <laughs> to know that we're texting an awful lot. Everybody, our grandmothers, our kids, Right? We're texting all the time. Now, we can take a look at that and understand that the beautiful woman I opened with sends or receives about 600 texts every month. We don't need the data. I didn't need to tell you that. All you have to do is take this device out of your pocket or your purses. We used to call this thing a phone. It's quaint. I've gotten three tweets and a text since I've been on stage, by the way. It's like a 19th, 20th, I got another one. A 19th, 20th century thing, this thing that we call a phone. It's not a phone. It's one of the most powerful handheld writing technologies ever. And they'll get more powerful. We write with this. We don't speak with this. If this woman uses social media, she does much more than text 600 times a month. She writes. If she's a professional in a knowledge workplace, she spends her entire day writing, and many of you do the same. You may not recognize that that's what you're doing. I'm a lawyer. I'm not a writer. No, you're a writer who also does some lawyering. <laughs> no lawyers like this. They get paid much better to be a lawyer than to be a writer. The network is the true revolution of our time. It's commonplace to think that the computer is revolutionary. The computer's powerful, the computer's important, but networks have changed everything. They've changed everything about how we write in particular. So consider Facebook for a minute. Facebook is really boring. We've had Facebook for seemingly forever. It's really not that interesting to me. But here's what's interesting. What if we rethink Facebook? What if we think of Facebook as something like the most significant collaborative writing project in human history? If Facebook goes away, it leaves behind this massively, collaboratively, multimodal text, this chunk of human history, which could never have been assembled before Facebook. That's powerful. Computer networks have changed writing. It's not just text anymore. It's also voice, sound, video, and image, and mashing all of these things together. It's having audiences who are immediately present to us, participatory and interactive. Computer networks have revolutionized many things, but they've completely changed the nature and meaning of writing. Except in school. In school, we still teach writing roughly the same way we taught it about 100 years ago. If we teach it at all, it is truly the neglected R. It's on the margins of education. Now, I don't blame teachers for this. 
I work with lots of middle and high school English teachers. They know what the right thing to do is. They are put in context right now in conditions which makes it exceptionally difficult to have the courage to do the right thing. And something I'll come back to. 40% of high school seniors report doing no extended writing in their senior year. Many, many studies show that students do as little as three hours of writing in a week. It is neglected. Now, where writing is taught, and I guarantee you the most systematic form of writing instruction in every Michigan high school that's interested in sending students to college is a standardized writing assessment. What you have before you on this slide is a piece of a prompt for an ACT test. The digital writing that I would like to be taught in school is probably not being taught, but this is being taught. Taught all the time. On this test, students are given a prompt, like educators debate extending high school to five years. Students will be given some pro information, and they will be given some con information, and they will be asked to take a position on this very, very important question. I have some colleagues who study writing and standardized assessments, and they will tell you, as will the teachers who are trying desperately to prepare their students for this test, as will the test prep industry that has sprung up around high stakes testing, they will all tell you that there's two things you have to do to do well on this writing test. One, you have to deploy a writing formula. And in that writing formula, you're supposed to do something in paragraph one and something in paragraph two. There's probably five paragraphs, not four, not six. God forbid there are eight. And the second thing you must do to be successful is lie. Now this would be amazingly wonderful if we were teaching fiction. People get paid a lot of money to lie. That's great, but we're not. This is supposed to stand in for analytical thinking, good reasoning, and effective writing. Give a school a bad curriculum and you'll get a bad school. Teach writing in this way, we'll get bad writing. Now I know you can't read this slide. This is an amazing cartoon put together for the National Day of Writing. Bet you didn't know there was a National Day of Writing. Look for it. It's got to be on a calendar some way. Celebrate it by writing with your children and loved ones. This cartoon lists all sorts of amazing forms of digital writing that young people and old people alike are doing today. The good news in relationship to this slide is that young people are doing all these kinds of writing today. Even better news, most of them know, are convinced, that writing well is essential to success in school, essential to success in their lives, to being good citizens, to being good human beings. But this writing on this slide, the writing that these young people are doing in their lives, isn't visible in school, isn't recognized as writing, isn't valued. It's probably a good idea for me to take a step back at this moment and ask a very different kind of question, a related question though, and that's, why does writing matter? There's all sorts of good pragmatic reasons, very powerful pragmatic reasons why writing matters. It's a subject matter in school. We don't teach it enough. We don't teach it well enough. But it names a set of essential language practices. More importantly, perhaps, writing supports learning in every other subject matter. Want to ask a student what she knows about physics? Have her write about what she knows about physics. That's the acid test. Writing well correlates with success for individuals, for groups, for teams, for organizations, for communities. The pragmatic value of writing is very powerful. But there's something really deeper and much more important about why writing matters. All animals communicate. Only human animals write. We write to build and maintain relationships. We don't write for tests. We don't write in response to prompts. We write to be with other human beings. We write with people. We write for people. So for those two very powerful reasons, the pragmatic power of writing and the deeply human power of writing, it matters absolutely and should matter to education. But in a new key, we need digital writing to be at the center of the way in which we educate young people and old people alike. It's not a frill for the few. It's not an edge thing. It's a center. But to take digital writing seriously means that we're beyond text. Text matters. We have to deal with all that video and all that sound and all those 
still images. And we have to mash those things together and do amazing things. We have to help students learn how to deal with the fact that their audience is immediate, that they can publish with the push of a button. That the time lag between writing and audience feedback is almost instantaneous. That changes the rhetorical situation. It changes how we think about writing and how we do it. And we have to recognize and acknowledge and make visible as a part of our learning environments the fact that people are using digital writing today to do all sorts of remarkable things. They're starting social movements. They're making art and sharing it. They are changing the world right now, today, using digital writing. And some of those people are our students. We could learn a little bit from them. There is absolutely no question, in my mind, and I'm hoping in yours, that we are living through a time of particularly dramatic and truly interesting change. Networks are revolutionary. They have changed the very nature and work of writing. Writing matters, and digital writing matters absolutely. The trick and the challenge for us as educators and as leaders, for you as educators and as leaders, is to understand and help people who want to learn to use these digital technologies, to learn to use them with thoughtfulness and with power.